Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on hydrates. Um, hydrates are sort of unique in that they are ionic compounds, metal and non-metal, but they have a certain number of moles of water attached to them, and it's normally loosely attached. Now, as you said before, this dot right here, Okay, does not mean multiply everything by six, but it's just telling you that you have six molecules or six moles of water attached to this ionic part right here. Now, guys, hydrates, right? Um, they contain water. Now, if you heat them up, you will dehydrate them. That means you get rid of all the water, and then you become anhydrous. So if, for example, we heated this cobalt chloride um, hydrate, okay, what would happen is you will be just left with anhydrous COCl2 because all the water will be driven off. All right, so that's a term right there, anhydrous and dehydrate, okay, that we should know. Um, in this topic right here of hydrates, we need our reference tables, we need our calculators. Now, just as a side, um, with Mr. McMahon later on, um, you'll do this, you'll have this guy right here, this is called copper sulfate pentahydrate, normally a blue powder. And when you heat it up, it turns to this grayish, whitish color right here. And this is the anhydrous form of um, copper sulfate pentahydrate. The hydrated form has this blue color, and the anhydrous form without water has this grayish, whitish color. All right, moving on. Um, I want you to pause the video and try these guys right here. We have some naming, okay, and we have some writing of formulas. I want you also to try this problem here, okay, make a good attempt at it. And this problem right here, I want you to try this one right here. This is similar to one we had in the percent composition worksheet at the bottom, um, number six, seven, eight. Okay, um, naming. Na3PO4, from experience, okay, and the fact that we have our reference tables, um, Na is sodium, so you simply write sodium down, all right? Sodium. PO4, right, and we recognize this guy as a ternary compound because we have more than two um, different types of elements. So you look on table E, PO4 simply is phosphate, so you write that down. Now, in terms of this part right here, you have five H2Os, right? You simply represent the five with the Greek prefix penta. And the H2Os would be represented as hydrate, okay? To represent it, that the compound is a hydrate, and you're done, okay? So sodium phosphate, pentahydrate is your answer. B would be calcium sulfate. dihydrate. Now once again, you have your periodic tables, right? If you see that it's ternary, you go to table E, you don't guess, all right? MgSO4 will be magnesium sulfate. And if it only has one water, it will be monohydrate. And MN, okay, NO3, parentheses 2, okay, MN is manganese. Now, if I'm not mistaken, manganese has more than one oxidation state. Now, reverse crisscross works in this um, example right here. So it will be manganese, Roman numeral 2, nitrate. And it will be tetrahydrate. Okay, and that will be those guys. Now, in terms of writing the formula, you have experience, right? Um, doing the crisscross method for ionic compounds. So, magnesium nitrate hexahydrate would be M. 
G, right? And we know MG has a two plus charge. We know nitrates NO3 has a minus one charge. So when you crisscross, you get MG parentheses NO3 parentheses around the polyatomic ion and the two goes there and you have hexahydrate so you put a simple little dot right there okay and six H2O's all right so that's how you do that one right there all right iron two sulfates heptahydrates would simply be F E now sulfate is SO4 with a two minus charge so they cancel out the twos cancel out so it'll be F E S O4 okay dot hepta is seven you put seven H2O right there. Now, once again, guys, if you're confused about the crisscross method, I have a video on that. Just review that and crisscross with stock system. Okay, these last two, I'll leave them alone for the sake of time. I'll move on to the um, other problem. All right. Now, in this problem right here, they're asking you to find the percent of water in this hydrate right here. Now, this name of this hydrate would be what? It would be K and S, right? So you got K is potassium. And S will be simply sulfide. Now remember that part is just binary because it's just two elements. So it's binary. So potassium sulfide and five would be penta. And the H2Os will be represented as hydrate. Okay. Now, you want to figure out the percent by mass of water in this guy right here. Now, simply, we know the percent composition formula is on table T. So, what we need is to find the mass of the whole compound. So, what we simply do, we will make a neat chart and clear. All right. So, you simply go K, and we have two of them. And the mass of 1K is... My reference table is 39.1. Okay, for S's, we have only one of them. All right, and the mass of each S is 32.10. Okay, we'll try to one because we're using one that's all, please. Okay, so no problem. All right, the waters, right? We're not going to split them apart. We will simply say for water, right? We have five of them each with a mass, we should be familiar with this, of a mass of 18.0. All right, and we'll do the math on that. So you have a calculator handy. Two times 39.1 is 78.2, okay? Um, one times 32.1 is 32.1, and five times 80 is 90, all right? You will add those guys up. All right, so what we're simply doing here, this is a perfect example of calculating GFM, the mass of the whole thing, all right? So you will get 200, okay, 200.3, okay, as your total mass, okay? Now, what you have to do now is put the mass of the waters, all right? Now, I put be careful over here because please don't put just 18 over the 200.3 we have five okay we have five moles of water five moles of water gives us 90 so we need to put in a 90 okay over the 200.3 all right and that'll be times 100 okay and when you do the calculations for that you should get something close to 44.3 9.3%, okay, around 44.93 or 44.9%, okay, around, all right, and that's how you do that, so that's how you just simply calculate the percent of water in this whole guy right here, all right, moving on, last problem, you can be asked also, right, to figure out how much of the ionic compound you have left in a hydrate. Now we're using the previous hydrate, right? And the previous problem to make life simple, but it could be any hydrate and it's not a problem. All right. Now, first of all, you say to yourself, okay, I have a sample that is 245 grams of this hydrate. Okay. Now the thing, the definition of a compound is that the 
elements are always, always in the same ratio, no matter what the size of the sample. So we're going to use that fact to our advantage. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this problem. We realize that the sample is now going to be dehydrated, right? That means it lost all of its water. So if it lost all of its water, and it's now anhydrous. That means only K2S is left, all right? We don't have any water in it. Now, in this previous problem, we figured out that we have 44.9 percent water in the sample right so if we know we have 44.9 percent water how much percentage of k2s do we have you simply do a simple subtraction right so we should have 55.1 percent of K2S. Now, how did I get 55.1? All I did was, I know we work with 100%. If you subtract the 44.9%, which is water, okay, the rest left would be simply K2S. So I have 55.1 of K2S left. Now, what are we going to do with that 55.1 of K2S? Simply this. This sample, right, once again, has a definite ratio of potassium sulfide, K2S, to water, all right, always, no matter what size of the sample. So we know 55.1% can be written as 55.1 over 100, all right, or it can be written as 0 0.551. We can now use either of these guys, okay? We can use this or this to get our answer. And how are we going to get our answer? We will do a simple multiplication. So what you're going to do, you'll simply take 0 0.551 or this guy, either one. You will times it by 245. And that should be your answer. Now, by my calculations, I got, okay, as my final answer, 136.47 grams or 136.5 rounded to one decimal place in terms of grams. All right, so that's how you do that, and you're done. All right, guys. As always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. This is an introduction to hydrates. Um, you can be asked to find do a problem like this. You can be asked to find the percentage of water, and it's quite simple because the percent composition formula is on table T. Okay, so we're not going to forget that. Use your reference tables carefully. Um, you can be asked to recognize a name. All right, but there's not going to be a lot of that. But you can just just name them. All right, or you can be asked to. Um, give the formula which is a simple crisscross now you also folks can be asked right the total number of atoms in a particular hydrate so here's what i mean by that for example let's look at d right here right we have how many mn's we have one mn right we have two n's so we have one mn all right we have two of the n's okay now in terms of oxygen is right here right the two distributes of the oxygen and the N. So we have six oxygens. Now we have to be careful when we get on this side. We have four times two is eight hydrogens and we have four oxygens. So you can be asked the total number of atoms in the hydrate. So you just add these numbers up. You add the one, okay, one plus two is three, plus six is nine, plus eight is 17, plus 4 is 23, and you're done, okay, so that's, there's a problem like that, it's very, very simple, you can knock it out, or you can be simply asked the number of oxygens, which is 6 on this side, and 4 on that side, giving you 10, all right, so 10, and so on, you just do it like that, okay, guys, take care, study hard, be well.